everyone, my name is Rachel King. I'm a registered massage therapist, and thanks for tuning in on my first set of videos on home care. Today's topic is low back pain. So when a client comes to see me and they're suffering from low back pain, I do a general health history with them, and I ask them a series of questions, such as what caused this pain, how long have you had it, and for me the most important question is, what are you doing that's causing this pain now? What range of motion is being affected? Because as a massage therapist, I focus on muscles, soft tissue, ligaments, tendons. And muscles, how they work, they're attached from one bone to another, they shorten and contract to allow movement to happen at that joint. So something now is causing you to not be able to move. So your first range of motion that I'd like you to do is, can you bend forward? Even a little bit. Does any of this all the way down, should full range of motion be able to touch your toes? Okay, does any of this cause you any pain? And what about now when you're coming back up slowly? What if you went back a little bit further? Which of these two movements causes you more pain? Is it going forward or is it going backward? How about if you go side to side? Does any of this cause you any pain, discomfort? Very different pain versus stretching. Bending down to touch your toes and you're feeling the stretch in the back of the hamstring, that's okay. That's not causing you pain. That's debilitating your current movement was causing you so much of this pain. And how about rotation? Can you rotate? So today's video is focused on you not being able to bend forward. It's very important to bend forward. You need to bend forward to daily activities. Put on your socks and shoes, bend to brush your teeth, do dishes, simple activities. Often these muscles get tight from sitting all day because when you're sitting all day, you're sitting in a chair and your knees and hips are bent flex at 90 degrees. So let me introduce you to the psoas muscle. It is most likely what's causing you a lot of your discomfort. The psoas muscle attaches on the front side of your spine. There's two sides of the spine. There's the back side, and then there's the front side that's way deep down in there. So the psoas attach to the front side of the spine around T12, so let's say around here, and lines your entire hip bone and attaches onto the top of the leg, okay? And if you get trigger points in them, a trigger point is a knot that's been in the muscle for some time. So these are where the X's are, okay? It will radiate pain and cause you pain way over here. Look into your low back. See, purple, purple. It can cause some pain down the leg. More often than not, it causes a lot of pain here in your low back. So, especially if you're struggling to bend forward. So, simple things that you can do for stretching. Because you can't go forward, you need to take the hip back. So you need to lunge, okay? Ideally, keep the hips level, pointing in the same direction, left and right. You don't want it to be flaying out to the side. You're not going to feel the stretch as much. So you need the help, the hips, pelvis, straight. If that's not comfortable, you can go all the way down to the floor, rest your knee. I'm on a yoga mat right now. If it's not comfortable on your knee, bend the mat. Have a slipper, have a towel, have something to cushion that knee for you, okay? I'm actually okay. You can use, I have handy dandy yoga blocks. You can use a book, chair, something to hold on to if you feel you're not as steady, and you're going to lean and lunge into it. Never let the knee cross the ankle. You always want the knee straight on top so that your, your shin bone is actually protecting your knee, okay? Because when you're way up there, your knee is unstable in lala land. You need to have it nice and stable. So while you're pushing forward, you almost want to thrust your pelvis forward and you'll feel a nice stretch. The key for stretches is you have to hold. It's not easy. 20 seconds is not doing a whole lot. You need to hold for at least a minute. Ideally, as you progress, the goal would be to hold for three to five minutes, okay? If you are uncomfortable being like that, even having your feet hip width apart, you can be hip, feet flat. If you're not feeling this much, you need to have, be in a wider stance and up on your toes. Another one you can do, if you're not stable, hold on to something and bring the knee to your bum if that's still not accessible, you can have your knee resting on a chair. The main goal is to have the hip going further back to stretch this muscle out to allow you to eventually bend forward. Other passive things that you can do, especially in yoga yoga blocks. For home care, I always suggest to have a yoga mat, two yoga blocks, I have a foam roller, and some balls. These are actually yoga tuna balls. If you don't have them, tennis balls as well work great. This is a bigger tuna ball for fleshier areas. <clears throat> so, my balls are anyway. Take your block, 
Lying back, have your feet flat on the floor, knees bent, lift your pelvis up, and place that block on your sacrum, that flat triangular bone at the base of your spine, right on top of your, your bum crack. Okay, and then you're gonna stretch out your legs nice and slowly. Again, the idea is to stretch this pelvis floor. I can go up a little higher if you're flexible, and then you can really stretch out nicely, okay? You can keep your arms up, and I'm feeling a nice pull in the front of my legs. If I bring one knee into my chest and grab onto it, my right leg is lifting up a little bit. So I'm pointing it straight down, and I'm feeling an even better stretching through there. And again, I'm going to hold a good minute or so. Switch it over, do it on the other side. Okay? Nice and passive. Other great stretches you can do, because often when we throw out our low back and we can't bend forward, walking tends to be a big issue as well. So just stretch the side of the hip. You're going to cross your legs over, and then you're going to draw your legs off to the one side. So see how my top left leg is weighing down on my right leg, and I'm keeping my shoulders pressed against the ground. So the top leg is adding weight, and I feel a great stretch in through my hip. The muscles here on the side of the hip, when you're walking, it stabilizes the hip. Because at one point when you're walking, all of my weight is going to be on my left leg as my right leg swings forward. And often this will cause people a lot of discomfort. So that's why it's a really good stretch. So again, I'm arms out in a T. I'm going to go the other way this time. I'm going to cross my right leg over to my left, and I'm going to swing my legs over to the right. And again, I'm going to feel a nice, great stretch into the hip. Another great stretch for the hip is in yoga, we call it thread the needle. So you're going to make the number four with your legs, bring the legs up, and literally why we call it thread the needle, I'm going to bring my left leg through this whole I've created, grab the leg, and pull in. Having the foot flex protects the knee, okay? Don't let, them, let the foot be pointed. You want to have it flex, toes pointing towards the knee to protect the knee. Okay, different variations. You can grab the thigh, you can grab the shin, and you want to pull in, and I feel a great stretch on my upper left hip. Same thing, we're going to swing it around to the other side, and hold. I'm not holding long enough. This is not an exercise video, so you need to take my tips and stretch and hold longer at home. Thread the needle. You can also do the stretch when you're sitting at your desk, because everyone now is working from home. So you're going to sit like how all the boys sit. Okay, same thing, flex my feet. And you're going to hinge towards the knee. And same thing, I'll feel the stretch. So nice, good stretch to do while you're working at your desk. Especially when you're in pain. Stop and stretch. Then I'm going to show you what to do with my balls. For fleshier areas, like my hips, I prefer to use the bigger ball. So I'm going to go back to lying down on the floor. I'm going to place the ball on fleshy areas, not on that bone. It's called the greater trick. Not on your bone. You want to... So I'm back, feet up, and I'm putting the ball and just rolling it out. If I bring the knee into my chest, I'm actually adding more pressure, and then I can move my leg in different circles, and it's like I'm massaging it myself. Got to place it wherever you feel it's good pain. Never, I, my rule on my table is no angry faces. So as long as your face is calm and you can breathe through, we're good. Because your psoas was the bigger culprit, hip flexors. Another major hip flexor is your quads. So you can take your foam roller and you're actually going to roll and massage your quads. If you don't have a foam roller, you can also use a rolling pin and the rolling pin has handles and you can roll it like that. But with the foam roller, you're going to go onto and do a little forearm plank and you're going to shift your weight back and forth, concentrating lots at the top of your hip. So I'm further up higher up on my hip. You can go onto the one side and really get into the hip that way. 
And if you find a spot that's really quite tender, I'm not facing you. If you find a spot that's really quite tender, you just want to hold it and breathe. And I'm just going to roll back and forth. And that's it. I hope it gives you some relief. Stretch lots. All, I'm going to recap. When you first initially can't bend forward, your big thing is to stretch like this. Slowly, slowly, as this muscle will loosen up, you'll be able to get to the floor and focus on other stretches. Okay? Stay tuned to the next video. will be on what happens if you can't straighten up. You can bend forward, but you're stuck in this position. You can't straighten up. Till next time. Thank you.